My name is Grant Kramer, and I'm Professor Emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, we will be talking about Merlot. It's the second video in my series on grape varietals. Merlot makes a red wine. It is believed to have originated in southwestern France. Its parents have been found to be Cabernet Franc from the southwestern region of France, and a recently discovered new variety named Magdalene Noir de Charance. Just a few of these vines were recently discovered to be growing in northern Brittany, and DNA testing was done to confirm the parentage. It has multiple synonyms around the world, including Picard, Langon, and Merlot Noir, but Merlot is the name most recognized all over the world today. In fact, this variety is grown all over the world and is one of the most common red varieties grown. It is grown in numerous regions in France, particularly the Bordeaux and Languedoc regions. In fact, to my surprise, Merlot is the most common red grape in Bordeaux, not the more famous Cabernet Sauvignon. It is also grown in other countries such as Italy, Chile, and California, to name just a few. It likes cool to moderately warm climates. It grows best in regions that produce 2,500 to 3,500 growing degree days per year. It produces the best quality grapes when the days are warm and the nights are cool. In the cool climates, it can produce strawberry, raspberry, plum, herbal, and even tobacco aromas and flavors. In warmer climates, it can produce blackberry, black plum, black cherry characteristics. In hot climates, it tends to produce dried fig, coconut, and even chocolate notes. On the right here, you can see that Merlot fits in the middle of these grapes in terms of their average growing season temperatures that produce its best qualities. The vines grow moderately to highly vigorous. The leaves have three to five lobes with moderate sinuses and tooth margins. It has a U-shaped petiolar sinus and sometimes small tufts of hairs can be found on the bottom side. Its clusters are loose, medium to large in size and sometimes winged. The berries, when they are fully ripened, are blue and black in color and are small and round with thin skins. In Australia, they found that at flowering and fruit set stages, it is very sensitive to molybdenum deficiency. And so foliar sprays of molybdenum are used to help protect against those problems. It's a productive variety, like I said, it grows well on well-drained soils. Clay can be okay with certain situations. People refer to it as growing well on clay, but wet, wet soils are not good for any kind of grape. And so let's move on to the next slide for a moment to show you my friend, Case Van Leeuwen, who is the vineyard manager at Cheval Blanc in the saint Emilion region. He is also a highly esteemed professor of viticulture and enology at Bordeaux Agrosciences University. They have a variety of soils at Cheval Blanc, and the best soils that they can grow their grapes on are these clay soils that have cracking clay, as you can see here in this soil profile that he's pointing to. That crack in the clay allows the roots to grow easily through the soil, whereas clays are very heavy and difficult to grow in and the clay itself reduces the conductivity of water through the soil. So when the grapes are transpiring, water is drawn out of the soil, but the soil cannot supply the water fast enough. And this produces a moderate water deficit to the vines, which enhances the quality of those grapes in that region. Here I am on the right, enjoying a little bit of that beautiful wine, which is made from approximately 50% of Merlot, and Cabernet Franc. Here in this picture, you can see a vineyard on the Cheval Blanc property. This is an old vineyard, a 
Cabernet Franc vineyard from 1920. As I mentioned before, it is from the Santa Million region and it borders up to the Chateau Petrus property over here where the house can be seen, which is in the Pomerol region. So these two regions right here in this little location probably produce the best Merlot-based wines in the world in Chateau Petrus and Cheval Blanc. On the right-hand side of this picture is a vineyard from the left bank of Bordeaux. And here we have Merlot being grown. Uh, and in the middle is a core sampling that was taken out of that soil right there. And you can see the soil profile throughout here. And in this region, you can see some dark, heavier soils with a chalkier, sandy soil down below. And this also produces very good quality Merlot. So as I mentioned, it's productive. It, it likes well-drained soils, and it's generally grown in a vertical shoot positioning system. It has early bud break and a mid-season ripening stage in the fall. It's more susceptible to downy mildew in climates where downy mildew can exist. However, in our northern Nevada climate, we've never had moist enough conditions to create a downy mildew problem. At the Valley Road Field Station, we generally have bud break between mid-April to early May, depending on the year. And the season ends in the third to fourth week of September. So this gives us approximately 150 days to fully ripen the grapes in our location. Generally, we get bricks of between 22 and 24 berry ripeness and we get a slightly higher bricks with drought stress grapes than we do with well-watered grapes. The TA ranges from 4.5 to 6, depending on the year, depending on the climate in particular, how warm it was that year. Will A warmer year will reduce the titratable acidity more quickly than a cooler season. It's slow to go in and out of dormancy, making it more protected in the spring, but more susceptible to cold in the fall as compared to Cabernet Franc, for example. Merlots can be beautiful wines um, when they're produced in the right climates. They produce a softer wine with good color and mild tannins. It's the main grape in Bordeaux, in large part because of its greater resistance to powdering mildew and its ability to ripen fully in a cooler climate. It marries well with oak and adds complexity to the wine. It has fruit flavor descriptions of plum, blackberry, black cherry, strawberry, and even chocolate in some climate conditions. It's responsive to moderate water deficit, producing more fruity aromas, colors, and tannins. The wines are often blended with Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc to add body to the wines and a silky softness to the wine to moderate the more aggressive tannins that are found in the Cabernets. There are more than 30 plus registered selections of clones in California as based on the data from Foundation Plant Services. And in one scientific publication I found where trials were done between the clones, it was found that the FPS1 clone, clone three and clone six were more productive than clone nine, which was more productive than clone eight. And this was largely associated with the number of berries per cluster. So in summary, Merlot produces high quality grapes and makes good wines in Northern Nevada. This has been substantiated by a number of Merlot growers in the Northern Nevada area who have produced outstanding wines from their own grapes. So it's an excellent choice for Northern Nevada, and I highly recommend it. It's early to mid-season ripening allows it to avoid frost in the fall in Northern Nevada. However, its slow induction of dormancy makes it more susceptible to early winters. It has more fruit flavor, more color, and more tannins when it experiences moderate water deficit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video.
It will bring it to other people's attention. Well, that's it. Have a great day.